Hey guys, so I just want to let you know, um, I'm doing a little tutorial on aircraft carriers, um, letting people kind of get the idea of, you know, how to play it, how to, how to be effective at being a carrier and providing the support for your fleet that it's meant to do. Like a DD, you are extremely under armored. Um, this is a tier four independence class carrier. Um, Used mostly in uh, novice fleet battles, you know, um, you'll see it the most there just simply because of its AA abilities. It's, it's got an oppressive amount of AA um, compared to a lot of other ships. Um, the other thing is, is it's got a remarkable speed to it. Um, 31, I think, is the base knot. You can get it up to 35 with the right composition of commanders. But, you know, that really depends if you actually need to be moving. Now, the important thing about a carrier is you are a scout, you are support, and you are the last bastion of hope a lot of times. So what you run with with airplanes on the carrier depends on whether or not you're playing in a pub server or if you're playing in a fleet battle. Now for the most part, um, running airplanes you see in a fleet battle, you'll have one of two things that people do. They either max out their fighters and do the rest in torpedo bombers, or in a sub pub server you tend to see about three scouts here about a good mix of, of fighters and then pretty much the rest will make up as torpedo bombers due to their damage modifier. Now one thing a lot of people talk about are dive bombers and dive bombers versus torpedo bombers. Which one's better, which one does more damage, and which one does um, a lot of different things. The torpedo bombers stack the most damage. As you can see here on my carrier, mine can do 690 per torpedo, whereas a dive bomber will do 303. Now. The big difference in, you know, your play style, you know, as you watch this video and I explain a lot of things is you'll decide whether or not you want to run heavy on torpedoes or you want to heavy on dive bombers. What a lot of uh, people do are torpedoes because of their ability to pre-advance a ship and to direct a ship in a certain direction. Dive bombers cannot corral ships. They, they are strictly for taking down a carrier, for example, which has horribly weak armor, or you have um, a carrier or a battleship that's not paying attention, you know, usually speaking, a dive bomber can't get over the top of you. MGs will tear them apart, more than likely. However, if you do get lucky, a good set of dive bombers with a good accuracy and a good, good attack damage bonifier can bring a lot of damage um, to the ship. You know, the only thing with torpedo bombers that you have to watch out for is dud zones, and making sure they're they're aligned in a correct arc and I can explain that in the next step when we go to a a match that's what I'm gonna throw myself into so I'm gonna just get it set up here um, drop off three of those guys bring three of those leave those maxed out bring this back down to 21 um, thing about four the independence is it's a flight of three so you want to make sure these stay pretty true to three three planes per flight Scouts, I rarely ever send more than one in the thing, and then max this out. So we are at 47 total planes. Ammo is all good to go. Um, one thing before getting into battle, uh, what you carry, extinguisher, repair kit, and smoke bomb. Um, standard. In a, in a fleet battle, you usually throw gold on there. Um, you have ammo. Just max out your AA. This thing has no weapons. It has no offensive capabilities outside of its airplanes. So when it gets down to it, you either ram what's trying to kill you, or you run long story short there. Um, what I use for equipment in the bottom down here, you always use a drop tank. It's imperative for an aircraft carrier. You find it at the bottom. Um, what it does is it increases your fuel, your airplane's range by 20%, um, meaning that they don't use nearly as much fuel. I use boiler preheater and uh, hydraulic steering gear to help dodge and move. Um, I know it's weird saying with a carrier, but with a ship as nimble as the Independence, it actually makes a lot of difference. You can you can dodge and turn out of torpedoes because you are a long, flat boat. Um, for commanders, I know this is going to be a, another one of those very tr different things for each person because they may or may not have them. Um, generally, I run Mark Mitcher, not because of his fleet crews, which does sometimes help, but not really horribly great because if you look at the percent per stack, Let's just take his. Hit, let's take 3,000 meters in scouting range. At best, you would stack 5% of that, which means you take 3,000 divided by 5, and you get like 60, 
600 meters, excuse me. You get about 600 meters, which, you know, is half a click. That, that if you tally it up, can do a lot of things. A lot of people, speaking of scouting range, will add down here a uh, range finder. I find that totally useless with the carrier because you're not going to be able to shoot at what you can see. So it's better to be able to duck, dive, dip, and dodge. Oh, hey, there's SMD. Uh... He's getting a little shout out. I plugged to SMD over on Twitch. Uh, he's got some good tutorials and stuff, and I and I highly recommend watching some of his videos. So, there you go, SMD. Uh, you're getting a plug. Yes. Oh my, very much indeed. So, going back to Mark, uh, you have air attack warning, which grants a 45% chance to increase the speed of all aircraft that take off by 8% when an enemy is hit by dive bombers. Now, again, torpedo bombers won't do a damn thing about that, but a dive bomber can help but the thing is is you have to get that dive bomber to hit and dive bombers generally get torn apart by mgs especially if the person has good mg defense they will rip the bombers apart what's really important about mark is for the low end tiers you know we'll, i'll talk barracks here after a couple of seconds um mark's elite cv captain decrease flight deck reload time by 10 percent when assigned as captain of the carrier that is imperative. That cuts down how long it takes, and, and we'll see this in the, in the match, how long it takes for me to get a flight of planes up on that deck. Um, every second counts. You know. Also increases his maximum speed by one knot. He comes out as a three star, which are the little bronze guys right there. I'm um, oh, sorry. And uh, what's great about that is you don't really have to spend anything on him unless you want bomb aiming device, which increases dive bomber accuracy by 10%. I personally don't use dive bombers right now, but I may do that later date. Um, you know, I'm going to work on a few dive bombers uh, setups to see if I can get them to be a little more punchy, because um, it would be nice to force a, somebody to pay attention to above them and not off to the side. Next up, this is a floater for a lot of people, and now this has a this has a two tier two tier stack. Oh, let's see what SMB says. I'll leave you to it. Levels. Anyways. Um, What's really, really, really important that a lot of people don't realize with aircraft carriers is this is the most important position on the ship next to the captain. Now, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to go into barracks. And I am going to find my tier 4. There he is. Narrow sound for So I want you guys to notice Matsuda Chikai. He is a 3-star level 6 captain. Now, the only reason he is on this ship is for two, two things. Um, really, the only one is anti-air barrage right there, one up from the bottom. Uh, increases anti-aircraft and machine gun damage by 15% when assigned as your gunner. In a carrier that doesn't have any guns, that's really the best, best thing for him because now you can tear through your enemy's planes before they can tear you apart. You will just absolutely rip through them like a hot knife through butter. The other thing that he has is final defense, which increases maximum speed Again, adding that to Mark Mitcher's speed uh, by one knot and side bulge by 5%. Now, side bulge is just to help you against torpedoes, which, depending on your level and your commander set, may or may not do anything for you. Now, if you have four commanders that have side bulge of 5%, that totals up to 20%. Um, but I'll talk about that in a second. So, what I want you guys to focus and look at right now is I put it over the little tiny icon to the left of him, the gunner icon. Now, a lot of people miss this. When you're looking at all these little things, aircraft has at the bottom what's called aircraft dodge. That dodge rate with a three star level six commander is 40.39%, which means my planes have a 40% dodge rate. Now I'm going to take Alan McMillan, trusty Alan, who is at level 10, four star. So he is not only four levels higher, he is a tier higher. And I'm going to put him in the gunner slot and replace Matsuda Chikai. So now that he's in there, we're going to go take a look at our aircraft dodge rate. So right now, he has changed from 40% dodge rate to 68. You are looking at a 27.x% increase in my aircraft's ability to dodge. Between being a tier higher and four levels higher. Now, a lot of people ask me, what does that mean? Well, what that means is your airplanes are way harder to hit. They do not take the damage because they are darting around in the sky. That is imperative to getting your planes to live just that much longer than the other person's planes. Now, unfortunately, Matsuda Chikai, my Japanese commander, 
is not level 10 yet. I will be grinding him up to get to level 10, so I will get that lovely 60% aircraft dodge rate. You know, you get him up to legendary, it will boost it as well. Um, but uh, for now, it's just Matsuda giving me a 40% chance dodge. Nothing else on this ship changes. You know, no, no other bonuses to anything on here. It is just that is the one most imperative spot where putting your airplane on there, or your tier 10 commander, is one of the best things you can do. But me, I'm suffering on that right now with a bonus to my AA and MG, which is imperative with a ship that has 10 AA and 14 MG, keeping planes off of me and off of my fleet. Next up, um, I use James Johnson. Um, this is to bolster my fighters and overall every aircraft in there. One thing that he does is his 30 millimeter air, air bomb increases fighter damage by 10% means my fighters can tear their fighters apart quicker and their planes quicker. Though most people have him now because he was made readily available, he was a significant factor in me staying ahead of a lot of people in fleet battles because I had him. Um, his captain ability increases dodge rate of aircraft by 20% after use, last 60 seconds, can only use aircraft carriers. I really like that because if you couple that with a tier 10 commander, that means my airplanes would have an 88% chance to dodge. That is crazy good. But the thing of the matter is, is um, I I haven't really been able to sacrifice my deck reload speed yet. I haven't found a good combination to, to retain that deck reload speed to, to bolster him in there. His excellent ability, which is a four-star ability, is Spitfire, which grants a 50% chance to decrease all aircraft speed, or excuse me, to increase all aircraft speed by five and steering by five when attacker destroys an enemy aircraft. Um, haven't really seen the beauty in that except for a little bit of a bolster from your fighters um, I don't I like I said I haven't had a chance to play it yet and I kind of want to see if it's uh, static or if it's all planes non taken off and taken off you know whether it's the planes you had in the air they get the bonus or anything you throw up in that 30 seconds will have that bonus um, Immelman turn is awesome increases dog chance by 2% so right there if you stack that with the 68 I'd have 70% right now I'm up to 42 you know obviously you stack aerial circus you get 22% you know so that's not too bad circle training 2 increases steering performance of all types of shipboard by 2% sounds goofy but it adds up because it helps you keep your planes going without making them do the circle jerk which basically means they go in for a kill but they don't have a good enough turning ratio to make the straightaway for the torpedoes to fire and they will do a whole nother roundabout which really will wreck you and loses the element of surprise Next up, I run Arnold Shelby. Um, he is great because he is one of the only commanders that increases torpedo bomber damage. Most everything is all about dive bombers. In a, in a world full of dive bombers, Arnold is great. Uh, first off, he increases your deal, de uh, decreases the fuel consumption of all types of aircraft by 5%. You couple that with your little drop tank down there, your plane is now able to go quarter longer. That's useful. Your planes are out longer and you can scout better and you can just keep them out there and keep them as eyes on the field to keep it so your fleet knows where everything is. Next up, he has circle training two, increases the steering performance of all shipboard aircraft by two. You tag that to the 2% that uh, uh, James Shelby had, or excuse me, uh, James had above. Your planes now have 4% greater steering performance. As I said, it adds up. Um, next up, he also has Immelman Turn, which increases dodge chance by 2%. So him and James share a lot, share those two things in common. Um, but the one thing that Arnold Shelby does is he increases torpedo bomber damage by 5%. So I can spend Merit to raise him up to a 3-star. You know, spend 300, uh, excuse me, not Merit, but, uh, oh, what is it called? Oh my god, I'm doing horrible right now. Qualification, there we go. Wow, that's a brain fart. You spend qualification to bring him up to elite, you get that. Um, he doesn't have an excellent, so once you get him to 10 and an elite,